Hey everyone, welcome back to part four of my Logic Pro 11 Mixing Fundamentals course. In this video, we're going to do some minor time correction to the drums using flex time. Flex time allows you to manipulate the timing of regions, and while it's pretty simple to work with flex time on single tracks, it's quite a bit more difficult to use on multi-track recordings like our drums. Often when I mix songs for clients, I do find myself doing a bit of editing work along the way, and time alignment is one of these things I often find myself doing, because at the end of the day, I do want the instruments to be in time with each other and in time with the tempo and grid of the song, but we also don't want to get in the habit of overcorrecting things or quantizing every single drum hit perfectly to the grid. And while that approach might work just fine for pop or dance music, that's not what we're going to be doing here because we don't want the drums and the natural groove of the song to come across as robotic or fake. We want the drums to sound like real drums, not a drum machine. So we're just gonna fix a few rhythms here and there that seem rushed or behind. So to get started, I'm gonna select all of those tracks. You can select them in the mixer as well. And then with all of those selected, right here, you're gonna see your group assignment. Click on that, and then you can create a new group. So I'm gonna choose group one new, and you'll see the little one there pop up in all of those tracks. And the reason why we're creating a group is we want to be able to edit one of these tracks and have that edit be applied to all of the other tracks. Because if you just, you know, shift one kick drum over, that means that that kick drum in the kick out mic and the snare mics and then the overheads is still going to be in the same place. So as we shift notes around on the timeline, we want all of the drum tracks to be shifted around. So what I'm going to do now is go over to the inspector here and open up your group inspector. This will show up after you create a group. You can also show the group settings and you can give this group a name. I'll call this drums and you'll see the name drums shows up there. And the settings allow you to select what parameters you want to be group settings. So for example, if I turn on mute and then I mute one of the tracks, you'll see all of them get muted, unmute, all of them get unmuted. If I make solo a group parameter, I can solo one track and it solos them all and so forth and so on. So there's a lot of different parameters here that can be grouped, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to turn on editing because when we edit one track, we want it to edit all of the tracks. You can see that any selections I make, if I split, it's gonna split all of the tracks that are in that group. And this also applies to flex time. Now there is another feature here called Quantize Locked Audio, which essentially allows you to use the transients of certain tracks, especially like, you know, kick and snare, your close mics on those as a transient reference, but that's really only going to be helpful if you're actually quantizing the recording. We're not gonna be quantizing anything. All of the edits we're gonna make are manual. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that option off. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on flex time. So you can click here to show flex on your tracks and then just click here to turn flex time on on each track. And because these are in a group, you only have to select one of them and it'll analyze the transients in all 13 of these grouped tracks. Okay, so what you can see is it's analyzed the transients in all of those tracks. And you can see there are these little transient markers here on each of the transients. Mainly, we're gonna be looking at the kick and snare as our reference point. But there are some spots where there are some symbols that are a little out of time. Another thing we want to do is we want to change the flex mode. It's automatically put us in polyphonic mode. For drums, I prefer to use uh, slicing. You can also use rhythmic, but I think slicing works a little bit better because it doesn't actually stretch the waveform. It just sort of separates the waveform and then fills in the gaps. So I'm going to use slicing for all of these. And then what I'm gonna do is just turn on the metronome and I'm just gonna listen to the drums and metronome and I'll stop anytime I hear a, a rhythm that just seems a little bit off to me. It also helps to set your snap mode to division um, because then you can just snap your playhead to the grid and you can visually see where the notes are off. And again, what we don't wanna get in the habit of doing is you know, making every single note perfectly snapped to the grid lines. That's not what we're going for here. So even though there are gonna be areas where notes are a little bit ahead or a little bit behind, if it's not like a mistake or like a major, you know, rhythmic inconsistency, we're not going to fix it because we want the drum groove to sort of stand on its own and not sound like a drum machine. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add a limiter to the stereo out just to keep things from clipping. Um, that's solely for my video capture purposes, not anything else. So you do not have to do this on your end. Okay, so let's see there. Snare's a little ahead there. Ah, okay, I see. So this kick is fine. This kick is supposed to be an eighth note behind this one, and it's uh, quite, quite behind. And then this is a little bit ahead. So what you can do here is there's different ways you can affect the transients here, uh, and you can create flex markers when you click on them. If you hover over the top part, you can create a single flex marker. And if you hover over the bottom, this will create flex markers before and after your selection. So this is really uh, helpful for this because I just want to move this forward, but I don't want anything to the left or right of it to be affected. You can work with division mode like that and snap things directly to the grid, but there are going to be some situations where I'll turn this off and just sort of freehand things. Um, let's go ahead and add one here and then let's pull that back as well. So let's back that up a bit. Right there, do do da. It sounds like it's a little ahead. So let's create another set of flex markers here. Let's pull that back. Let's add one there and pull this one forward. In fact, let's go ahead and pull this one forward as well. And it's really easy to get like addicted to this and like have everything be perfectly in time. Sometimes I have to tell myself it's okay. It's just a slight timing variation. It doesn't need to be corrected. So you constantly think about that as you're doing this. Here's another one that's a, a bit behind there. That's probably the same the same part of the recording there. It was probably a copy paste job. So let's pull that forward, pull that forward, pull that back. Yeah, there's another one. There's a kick there that's a little bit uh, behind. So let's do that. Shift that over. So fills, anytime there's like a fast fill, it's important to check them because fills are usually where drummers tend to rush. What will often happen is they'll play a fill and at the end of the fill, the downbeat will be, you know, way ahead of the bar line. It actually sounds like he comes in slightly behind and then by the end of the fill, he's right on. So I'm, I'm just going to leave that alone. You know, if you wanted something that was a little bit more you know, touched up, you could do something like this where you uh, move those to land on their, you know, their downbeats, just like that. It's just snares, tom one, tom two. But I'm just going to leave that alone, so I'll, I'll just let it be. Okay, so some weirdness going on there. I think what I'm going to do is pull that forward. It's like the cymbals sound a little off. Yeah, that one is way ahead. That one's kind of ahead too. And again, it's up to you how granular you want to get with this, but you know, these little double bass hits if you want them to be kind of more even, you could do something like this with them, but that can kind of sound kind of stale. Um, you know, it can make them kind of lose their groove. So in this situation like this, I might leave the first one slightly ahead of the 16th note, but maybe even pull this one off of the 16th note just to give some like equal distance between these transients. You know, something like that. Or even we could take the snare and maybe make the snare line up a little bit better and then maybe pull back that double kick there. Let's see, that one was a little bit off there. Let's maybe try pulling that forward. 
And so you'll see when I, you know, when I adjust the overheads, I'm actually adjusting from the overhead track. I'm referencing the overhead track. I'm not referencing, you know, the kick because there's almost no overhead in the kick. Like I said before, double check all of the fills because that's typically where you can get off. Yeah, we're fine. This hits a little ahead, but I'm going to leave it. You know, you could make the argument that maybe these three kicks, uh, this third kick's a little bit too close to that snare there. So maybe I'll do something like this, where I just pull them out of the way. It's more of like a triplet, doo da da, right? Not doo da, you know, it's doo da da. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, here's one hit that's just a little, little off. Okay, and so now we're back to uh, the sort of intro idea. So I'll do the rest of this off screen and I'll be right back. Okay, so again, nothing like really major. I went through the whole thing. And again, I just stopped every single time I heard like an audible uh, timing error or timing issue or inconsistency. And the vast majority of them were just slight adjustments to the kick drum, snare drum. And like I said, in the choruses, there were a few spots where we had some cymbals that were kind of out of sync as well. So again, nothing major, you know, maybe a couple of dozen uh, timing fixes, but nothing that's going to throw off like the natural groove of the drums. Now, there's two ways you can work with flex time. You can just leave it on and just hide your flex edits and then just go and mix your song as you normally would. Or what you can do is you can render these flex edits in place or bounce them in place. To do that, what we're going to do first is pull these out of the group. You can disable all groups by pressing Shift G. So this will toggle all of your groups on or off. So we're going to turn them off. And then I'm just going to select all of those tracks. Hit Control B. We're going to do destination source tracks. So each of the tracks will be bounced in place on its current track. I'll set this to one file per track. We'll delete the old source. And we're going to bypass any effects plugins, even though there are no plugins on here at all. But that'll bypass any plugins you have on those tracks if you have them. So you're not accidentally rendering your effects into the bounce. And then make sure that all of this include audio tail, volume pan. Make sure all of that is turned off because we don't want the volume of the track to affect the bounce as well. And we'll turn off normalization and then just hit OK. And then that's going to one by one bounce each track as a new region with all of those flex edits rendered in. Now, if you're working with a pretty powerful computer, it's probably not going to be an issue to just let your flex edits be out there like that. But if you're sort of tapped for CPU power, this can certainly uh, help free up some CPU power for mixing. Okay, so we've got all of those flex edits bounced in place. And what I can do now is I can just turn off flex time on all of those tracks. Then I can hide flex time, and now everything is bounced in place. Now, while working with flex time, if you find that you're getting a lot of stop ups and error messages and overloads, what you can do is you can go up to Logic Pro Settings Audio. And just make sure that your I.O. buffer size is set to the highest value. We're pretty much going to stay on 1024 for this entire mix process because using a higher buffer size allows you to use more plugins and have more edits and more processing going on. But it does increase, you know, recording latency, but we're not doing any recording here, so it doesn't really matter. So anytime you're editing or mixing, I recommend keeping your buffer size at the highest setting. Okay, next up, we're going to move on to drum replacement and layering to enhance the sound of the drum kit a bit, and we'll do that in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.